Tonight, how the Cook Report illegally bought enough explosives to blow up a train. Three, two, one. Just as the IRA does. Just murderous, it's scum. The sound of the bombing is something that I'll live with for the rest of my life. This suburban train waiting at Newtondale Halt with dummies rather than passengers aboard marked the end of a journey. This man thinks he's dealing with the IRA. Semtex or or plastic equivalent. Yeah. Five metric tons. Five metric, yeah. Tonight's investigation took us from the northernmost point of Europe to County Limerick in Southern Ireland and the IRA's secret ammunition dumps. But it began at a railway station in Kent. Two weeks ago, and for the first time, the IRA had planted a bomb on a moving train, a cynical development in their mainland terror tactics. Bombs in the streets are bad enough, but the thought of a bomb in a crowded train is even worse. In this case, the passengers got off in time. But what the IRA sought, as we'll show, was a bloody massacre. So where do they get their explosives? We'd like to know how long it would actually take to get our hands on some high explosive. It took just one phone call to a contact in the criminal world. Now, what we're looking for is the nearest commercial equivalent to Semtex. <laughs> In the fight against terrorism, you'd think explosives would be impossible to obtain illegally. But you'd be wrong. The same day as we made our call, members of an alleged terrorist gang were arrested trying to break into this Somerset quarry. They were presumably looking for the same high explosives as we were. Anything that blasts rock can certainly blast shops, offices and trains. As a former Republican terrorist explained, it was the loss of those men that would have mattered most to the IRA. It's very, very important to realize that you can replace explosives, you can replace weapons, you can replace cars, but you cannot replace uh, highly motivated, highly dedicated volunteers. As that former terrorist says, and the authorities should know, getting hold of explosives is ludicrously easy. On the one hand, they're available in industrial quantities from Eastern Europe, even if you are the IRA. On the other hand, enough to blow up a train is just a local phone call away. Our contact rang back. The merchandise, he said, was ready. All we had to do was park a car in a Lancashire quarry with 300 pounds in cash in the boot. Making the approach, Peter Gurney, former head of Scotland Yard's bomb disposal squad. Open the boot. Inside was a plastic bag, an OXO tin. Before examining either, I'll put some gloves on. Should first examine the contents of a plastic bag. Inside the plastic bag, there are two plastic wrapped cartridges of explosive. This is one of the most powerful high explosives on the commercial market. Super Ajax explosive. Uh, that's a, uh, marked as a P1 permitted explosive, which is for use in coal mines. And in fact, the ends of the containers do have coal dust on them as though the cartridge has been withdrawn. 
from a shot firing hole in the OXO tin. Getting enough detonators is a particular problem for the IRA. An electric detonator with yellow orange leads. But this time it was just so easy. I'm horrified that, it, that this explosive is about. Um, I spent a great part of my life combating terrorist bombs made of such explosive or explosive similar to that. And to, to find it under these circumstances, I'm very concerned. Well, we were offered 25 pounds of this stuff, plus as many detonators as we wanted. What's your reaction to that? Well, all I can say is that Harrods was reckoned to be 30 pounds. Six people died at Harrods. Um, damage was appalling. Brighton was reckoned to, was calculated to be 20 pounds of explosive. They're similar in virtually in power to the explosive in the boot of that car. So you could have another Harrods, you could have another Brighton. Or another mortar attack on 10 Downing Street. This IRA propaganda film shows the terrorists still in training with the same kind of mortar. All this would not function if it wasn't for the presence of high explosive. And if you control the high explosive, you control the, the ability to, to employ weapons like this. The mortar was fired from a van. The explosive almost certainly came from Colonel Gaddafi. Southern Ireland, and the search goes on for what's left of his lethal legacy. We're out with the Rangers wing, the anti-terrorist specialists of the Irish Army. There's a suspected arms cache out on the field there, and these chaps have secured the perimeter and are keeping it under observation. The special search teams believe they've now found some 50% of the 134 tons of weapons sent from Libya. From one hall alone, say the police, enough weapons to kill 20,000 people. It was hidden under the floor in a farm building. In one location, the IRA had even built an underground firing range. We are totally dedicated to, to uh, uh, disrupt the activities of Pyra on an ongoing basis, day and night. And every member of the force is fully committed to that. But a new arms market is now opening up in Eastern Europe. So on behalf of the IRA, we sent a shopping list to Norway, to a man whose business operates a short boat ride from a huge Russian base. Detonators. This is both for standard... Eirik Olsen said his Russian contact could supply. Uh, How much did we need? Uh, almost as many as you can supply. They are the difficult thing. Semtex or, or plastic equivalent. Yeah. Five we... metric tons. Five metric, yeah. Uh, we can supply all... But, uh, Olsen said he could supply all we wanted. Sam-7 missiles for shooting down helicopters anti-aircraft guns, mortars, AK-47 assault rifles, and, of course, plastic explosive. So, uh, Semtex is not the best, either. It's just known because it's uh, very handy for uh, using in, in uh, radios and everything like that if you want to hide it. That's how the Lockerbie plane was brought down. Well, you can give us some details on that later. Uh, thermal batteries for the Sam-7s we've already got. Yep. And they can be done. Sam 7s? Yeah. 20 off? 20 off, yeah. Now, a point I have to make here, um, you do know or have a very good idea where these are going. Ah, uh, I do. So there's no problem for you that these are going to, no, this is, no these are going to Ireland they, no. and they're going to the IRA? No, they're not a problem. Not a problem? I'm not dealing with all these. Mm -hmm. I left that at Lodder. Mm. Okay. Because, so. as I said, I'd hate to think that uh, we'd place an order and you might change your mind. No, I won't. I do business, as I say. Yeah. And now, we, we also realize that we may have to pay a premium, and now that you know where it's going, you would know that we would not have any end-user certificates. 
I already figured that out. So in Norway, Olsen was offering on false paperwork arms almost identical to those recovered from the biggest ever Libyan shipment to the IRA when the freighter Exend was intercepted by French customs. You can arrange delivery into a common market country, probably Germany, from which, as we say, it's as good as in Britain. It is. And all we have to do is place the order, pay your introduction or arrangement fee of $50,000, pay 10% into an account up front, and give you proof of full payment. You give us proof of delivery, and it's as easy as that. That's all we have to do. We decided to check him out further in the nearby town of Tronzo. We'd been warned that if challenged, his excuse would be that he works for Norwegian intelligence. He needs an excuse, because anyone dealing with the IRA is dealing in death. We were now finding out more about the explosives and the detonators we'd bought in Britain. And around the crimping on the detonator, as corrosion as one would find if the detonator had been inserted in, in explosive at some time and then withdrawn. The explosive has not been cleaned off and has caused... We passed the explosives to the police and sent photographs showing the identification numbers to the manufacturer's ICI. But strangely, ICI said they couldn't talk to us due to client confidentiality, as if this was a normal business transaction. However, we worked out that our Super Ajax was almost certainly stolen from a coal mine in Staffordshire. Pickering, North Yorkshire. And we were about to find out just how deadly that train bomb in Kent could have been. From the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, we bought a carriage similar to the one from which the passengers escaped a fortnight ago. We painted it in network southeast colors Peter Gurney made the briefcase bomb for us and added a typical IRA finishing touch. This, here we have sort of typical fragmentation used by the IRA, in this case nails. You can imagine what these would do if they struck your body traveling with a velocity of about 5,000 meters a second. We were offered 25 pounds of explosives, but decided to use five pounds, about the same amount the IRA would. But this time the explosives were legal and the operators licensed to use them. mechanism to set the bomb off at a time decided by the terrorist. That simple? Just, just that simple, yes. Very, very simple indeed. And very lethal? Very lethal, yes. Let's be honest about it. Uh, small bombs serve their purpose in that if you put out one bomb per week, uh, there'll be 12 other bomb scares just because someone's been silly enough to leave a bag in the tube. Uh, it breeds, it, it feeds off itself, it breeds its own uh, comebacks in, in that matter. And every time a tube station is shut down, every time that a man hour, be it a single man hour or be it a, minio, a million man hours, each time a man hour is lost, it, it is costing Britain money. Coleraine in Northern Ireland, where the worst effects are usually felt, the terrorists also use homemade explosives, which are very simple to make, as a recent police hall shows. Oil drums containing a mix based on nitrate fertilizer and icing sugar. Last week, similar explosives were used against a British Army patrol. The foot patrol was coming along this road. One bomb was exploded across the road. The soldiers on this side of the road took cover behind a pillar like this. Inside the pillar, unknown to them, of course, was explosives, homemade explosives, about 40 pounds of explosives, and that was detonated as they took cover, and uh, they were injured getting into cover. One soldier died, 21-year-old Michael Bezik. They're just cowards, just a coward's way out, the IRA. They're just murderers, they're scum. It's a load of them scumbags. They've robbed me of my son. Not only of my son. <laughs> of grandchildren I might have had as well. And he was my life. In that Kent explosion, a score or more of innocent people could also have been robbed of life. 
And yet, despite the desperate need to control terrorism, we have some of the slackest explosive laws in Europe, many of them dating back to 1875. I would expect five pounds in this carriage to kill the people in this actual compartment, blow the windows out, blow all the framing back, and peel the roof back. Here we are, Roger. There's the bomb. Safe at the moment? At the moment, yes. If I was an IRA bomber, having first selected my target, in this case a commuter train running into London, I'd get on board, find the target area, chat up the people sitting next to me, and then at a predetermined moment get up and say, would you mind looking after this while I pop to the loo? I, of course, would get off at the next station, leaving the timing device to set off the five pounds of high explosive in here. Those explosives were almost identical to the ones we bought and untraceable once the wrapper was removed. Meanwhile, in Tromso, unfinished business. Eric Olsen asked to meet us at the local museum. Mr. Olsen, I'm afraid I have a surprise for you. Oh, yeah. You don't like journalists. I am a journalist. I am not an IRA supporter. You're not, okay. And you did offer to sell us. No. Yes, you did. And we have recorded it. You have offered to sell us arms for the IRA. I said that you, I can arrest. <laughs> that is conspiring to provide weapons to a terrorist organization, which is a criminal offense in Norway. We've just taken legal advice on it. So, would you explain why you were doing this? Yeah, I can do it. Explain why you were doing it, because that's an offense. That's a criminal offense. Yeah, I knew it. Why, I have done it. Yes, why have you offered to do it? Well, I'm cooperating with the Norwegian authorities. The excuse we expected wasn't long in coming. He claimed to be a Norwegian intelligence agent trying a sting on us. The Norwegian police are now considering prosecuting the man who says he'll sell anything to anybody, terrorists included. You were also offering to uh, sell nuclear weapons or the wherewithal to do them to anybody. Yes or no? 1,600 miles south, off the coast of Ireland. 15 miles. It's past the week tender. The Republic's naval service is constantly on alert for armed smugglers. They've so far caught red-handed two trawlers laden with deadly cargo bound for the IRA's secret bunkers. Yesterday morning, the search was routine, and all the boarding party found was fish. Dawn yesterday morning, too, and out of ICI's Midlands factory comes a lorry, which is, in effect, a bomb waiting to be stolen. ICI, who made the explosives we bought, didn't want to talk about their lorry, either. Their advertising describes it as a mobile explosives production unit. In one tank, emulsion matrix. In the other, ammonium nitrate. ICI says it's safe, but mix them together, and the effect is potentially catastrophic. Very much so, and not just an explosive. It's as powerful as Sentex and uh, many other well-known brands of high explosives. It's not just a uh, material which burns. It's a very, very violent high explosive, very high shrapnel effects, extremely powerful. What about the fact that it's carried around without restrictions? It's absolute nonsense. It's very, very dangerous, and sooner or later a serious incident will take place. Now connect to the final wire. Over to you. Okay, everybody clear. Five, four, three, two, one.
It's horrendous, isn't it? Absolutely horrendous. And these are bits of bodies. You see, there's an arm. It's shocking. <laughs> Had you expected quite so much damage? Well, you never know what to expect, really, do you? Just, I mean, there's the heads that are lying around here, the whole trunks of bodies from these dummies. They're not entirely Terrible. realistic, but it does give no, you a pretty good but, indication. Uh, no, it's at least as tough as human skin, aren't they? And you just look at the carnage inside the actual carriage. Yeah. You see it across here, the... I mean, the whole of that family that was there is gone. And this is just one five-pound bomb in an ordinary little briefcase. That's right. Nothing left in there, is there? No. No life. What lessons do you draw from that, then? Oh, by God. <laughs> One, one, one just doesn't know how to start it, really. I mean, uh, somewhere that briefcase was put down and there were people on the train and the person who did it walked off. And possibly, only possibly, public surveillance could have stopped it. And in fact, the, the greatest success we've had against the cave has been whether there's been a public cooperation. We've tipped off the police who've seen something curious and been able to do something. This proves it perfectly. We've had a terrorist problem for two decades, yet just two phone calls produced enough high explosive to destroy a train. I think most people would find that shocking. Well, I too am, am shocked, and I am surprised. As I say, there's no doubt about it that however good your regulations, however strongly they're enforced, you can't stop the pilferer, the person who's determined to take advantage of their privileged situation and steal a bit of explosives. I, mean, I think it's going to be difficult ever to prevent that. But, as always, we'll have a look at the situation which has risen, and if we think there are steps that need to be taken, further steps, then we shall seek to take them. The terrorists at present can easily stay several steps ahead. Stolen explosives are untraceable once unwrapped, and a system of chemical markers hasn't been adopted, in part because the government and the industry can't agree who should pay. Neil Tattersall survived the Manchester Christmas bomb. I don't think people realise how bad it can be. I mean, the devastation is total in there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hopefully people will take heed by it and realise it's not a joke. How close were you to uh, the device that went off in your case? Three feet. So you were very, very lucky. something that I'll never get over. The sound of the bomb, the devastation that it does cause, something that I'll live with for the rest of my life. To know that I could have been killed. And this brought it all back? Yep. Well, I'm sorry to have put you through it. It's OK. I just hope that people take heed by it. Police are still anxious to hear from anyone who escaped from that first train bomb. The confidential hotline number is 0800 789 321. Help catch the bombers before they strike again. <laughs>